Hello and welcome to another gameplay review on the Vakayu Gameplay Channel. And in this one, we have the best win rate jungler on the final patch of Season 11, Vi. Basically, her win rate is soaring. She's enjoying the fact that the Gore Drinker users got nerfed in terms of their inherent sustain for elongated fights, and obviously that shift in 1121. Now those champions who are still building it, they're significantly weaker, but they have more HP, but Vi doesn't care because she has that. Overall, though, the champion has enjoyed the fact that things like Jarvin and Lee Sin and, and those uh, Bruisery Assassins, those are gone. The sustained fights that she loves so much now are really going in her favor. With the Hell of Blame Rune set that you will see on your screen shortly, plus the Ultimate Hunter, Triumph and Alacrity, it's a good setup. It's a very good setup. This player here was Grandmaster last year, spamming Vi, trying to get back to it this year, currently Master Tier. If you're looking for a champion to get gold, diamond, or as I said, Master, this is probably the best one to spam, which is very fortuitous for me, because Arcane is coming out, and I can put the Arcane skin on the thumbnail. Don't forget to look out at how you can get that for free also, and unlock it during all the festivities starting tonight and tomorrow with the finals, and of course Arcane. Runes you would have seen, as I said. In addition to that, Vi was the first champion I made. Very first champion I made in ranked, specifically. End of season is, uh, end of season three. I came from Halo, so my concept of, you know, ranked grinding was significantly <laughs> different than League of Legends. And with a week left in Season 3, I hit level 30 and I thought, you know what, I can get gold by the end of Season 3 with one week left, right? It didn't work out so much. Um, but in the preseason, spammed Vi, learned how to play the game, and um, she was instrumental in basically how I learned to jungle. And I think in this case, it's very important that you understand that Vi enables you to jungle well. You don't have to think much about the champion. You do not have to think much about mechanics. You just have to point click, put yourself in the right direction, like a good golden retriever fetching a ball, and you're gonna have some fun. Now, also, in this game, we're against a Twitch jungle. Here we go. Oh my, how unexpected. Sometimes the cheese is so expected, it's no longer cheese. The Vi in this situation is obviously gonna go for that five cam clear. We do wanna do the grump um, after the blue, but if the enemy jungle is a cheeser, and tries to do these kinds of things, it's very imperative that you punish them to some capacity. Now, 4 camp in it is not my favorite, I don't like it, but if it's reactive and it lets you counter jungle, that's fine, we can do that, because we know the Twitch is not gonna do this. And if he does this, it's doomed. We place this ward. This is being pushed up, so we can look to gank that. The Twitch here is gonna look to gank mid lane to the Twisted Fate. Rightly so, let's it push into himself. The Twitch is gonna have no choice but to go grub into the top crab, by knows this. We snack on the Raptors, we snack on the bottom crab, and then we can look for a gank. What Vi does very well, standard jungling. Standard map control jungling. Standard objective control, map flow, react, team fight ability. She has everything you need in your kit to really bring your jungling to the next level because of her, just of her, because of her kit, that's it. I don't know why I'm stuttering, I'm just so excited that her win rate is very good once more and so many people can actually use this in the last 10 days and please, use this champion. We're gonna look here, uh, Jin's a little low, getting chunked, he's not gonna want to go fighting just yet. Uh, probably wants to reset. This is under tower, it's a Twitch, we haven't seen him in a while, so basically we can assume he's either gonna wait around and cheese top lane, maybe he went back to base and he's gonna try lane gank this. We don't want to overcommit. So in this game, it's not really snowballing. The Vi is 100% the MVP, let's not question that whatsoever. But in this situation, it's not a game where you snowball out of control for no reason. And I had one uh, from the same player, but re really the Yumi just attached herself to the Vi and I, I despise that champion. I, if you can only play Yumi and you get to a certain rank, no offense, try play something else. It's a very different ball game. I mean, honestly, Janna is, is a completely different skill set to, to Yumi. Um, I understand they're good Yumis, but let's, let's not kid ourselves. If you can literally ditch your ADC and sit on a Vi with four kills and just run around the map and get another five, I have, I have an inherent problem with this as a support main and as a jungle main. I do both. Vi now basically finishes the quadrant, making sure that she's going to reset, go topside. Anticipates that the uh, Twitch will once more rotate. We do the flash Q combo there and an E, not quite enough, but it's very, very close. We burn the flash from the side, so that's great. This is all you look for early for Vi. This is it. Probe, have a look. Is there something? No, okay. Ideally, we want to try use a flash Q combo early. And now because the Twitch has not really shown um, at this point, and the TP's on the tower we can see on the minimap, let's try to get a plate for our Kale and uh, get out. We don't want to get stuck under tower there with the Silas chains. Maybe Twitch will show up as well. So we can just leave. Perfect. Uh, here after base, the reason we go gank 
and I want you to notice this, okay, is because you want to gank and then reward yourself with camps. Here we go. Reward yourself with camps. And while some coaches might tell you, hey, you know, just keep farming and just keep scaling, pretend all your teammates are, are donuts, to a certain degree that isn't right. And I think you must understand win condition, who's competent, and you can still get yourself fed at the same time. Um, bot lane are going 2v2 here. Uh, the Twitch was seen top lane and potentially heading in that direction. So the Vi here now wins top lane in terms of burning a flash, letting the KO reset. Yeah, the Silas pushes out again. She cannot take her red side camps. Uh, the ward here dies from the Yasuo. Did you see that? The ward just died here. Um, so we're getting pings, and that means the blue team knows exactly where you are. And if you pick that up while you're farming, you know that they know where you are. And Vi basically here can say, listen, there's been, been a bit of cheese, but I have total game control. Cut the map here. Don't do wolves. Don't do grom. Why? There's a crab. And if you literally follow these instructions early, you will win a lot of games with Vi. And you're going to see exactly how. I understand we all like the flourish and the kills and the triple penters early. Here, I like this. I like this move. You know, let's look to see if we can invade the red on the weaker jungler. You win a lot of matchups and you win a lot of 1v1s, especially with Sheen and Hail of Blades. Yasuo moves, bot lane moves, no prior. Leave. Don't in for it. Leave. Fall back to your blue side. And now this is again, rewarding yourselves with camps. Because if you did this, this play is gone. You cannot make it. But if you try and make that play, and it works, and I did this literally the other day. I just walked in as Volibear, took the red, killed the Rengar, and left. The enemy team didn't know it was coming, so they didn't rotate. It was great. In this case, they do rotate, which means you have to leave. But you can then fall back to your camps and now look to do something else. Yasuo moves top lane to kill the Kale. Twitch was just doing his red. Where's the Twitch going? That direction. Which means free Dragon. And that's exactly what we're looking for with Vi. This is not the most sexy game, but if you can have... Let's, let's develop a game plan for you. If we can have, let's say, a good first clear that where we get level 3 and we potentially look to do some counter jungling reactively uh, or we look for a gank early. If nothing, finish off your quadrant, reset, and now instead of going straight back to farming, right, if nothing happened, let's go look for a gank on another lane. If we can get a flash, brilliant, because if that flash is burned, it means they cannot flash your ultimate and you're going to lock them down very, very easily at level 6. From there, fall back down to your camps, look for potential plays rather than full clear, and if a dragon opportunity presents itself, do so, get six, and now look to use your ultimate. And that's exactly what she's done, and it's exactly what you do every single game. Now, bottom lane has been pushing the whole game. And a lot of junglers, hands up if this is you. Oh no, my laners are pushing. I can't gank. That's nonsense. If they're pushing, we dive. And even though the dive will end in pain... The attempt is the most important thing. You cannot learn how to juggle aggro. You cannot learn how to be good at diving if you don't ever try it. And at the same time, if the enemy jungler is a cheese ball, like the Twitch, oh, <laughs> here he is, running around doing random things where you can't really track it fully and is just going to try and spam gank and make things difficult for you, the best things you can do is always play around your own game plan, keep it standard, keep it safe, do the dragons, do the heralds. Twitch is bottom lane now. Now, some of you might think, haha, crab, why? You don't need it. What we need is this red buff. Uh, I want to click on Vi, so I can double click on this. Thanks for the guy in the comments who told me that. <laughs> we will get 7 from this red. Which means if you want to look to make a play... Cheese ball. How do we react to cheese balls, ladies and gentlemen? Well, in this case, I think we could go immediately to the uh, Herald. But the Yasuo is rotating. Ult up in 37. We do have Ultimate Hunter for a reason. Silas is rotating down. We have Predator activated because Twisted Fate is running it, as we saw in the bot lane dive. Now we can just Q sustain. That flash being burned earlier is great, but it is back up, so we didn't get to abuse it, but the Silas dies anyway. Yasuo is now running for the hills. Four people are chasing. All collapse. Q charging just in case. If nothing, go the other direction. You can do that. Wolves are down. Let's see if Grump is up. Yes, it is. We can snack that. That's a level 7 Grump, so that's hugely valuable. Twitch is still diving on the bottom side. Jin is crying out loud because Janna is uh, top lane, so he's yelling support difference. Kale tries to TP to clean something up, and... Don't worry. Breathe, unlike what I was just doing. Okay? First part of the video, Asman was triggering me, took the pump. Now I can breathe a little bit. <laughs> Modern medicine. And after this, please just take the objectives. And I think that's the most fundamental thing here. With a solid game plan, play around your ult. Use that uh, early Q to make sure you're burning a flash. But then play around the ultimates. Now, you've created this. You'll say, well, Twisted Fate wouldn't rotate in my games. If he does, if he doesn't, you react. Um, the Vi... Ooh, a little close. 
The shield comes in nicely. Oh, okay. <laughs> Woo. The Jinx ult. I don't know why I keep buffing her. She's fine. Oh, wait. Arcane. I see you, Riot Games. I see you. Indirectly shifting the meta. For, so Vi Jungle has the best win rate because of her ability just to do this. And uh, just relentlessly buffing Jinx until she's relevant. And now remaking Caitlyn. Mm-hmm. It's not for the skins, ladies and gentlemen. It's just for the marketing. It's all it is. Not really. I'm memeing. In case you, in case you want to wear being facetious, you know, I'm not, I'm not being serious. But it is quite fortuitous that Vi is getting popular again, and hopefully this video helps a lot. Uh, Twitch is now diving bottom lane. Hopefully you saw that on the mini map. Vi rotates there. Let's just have a look at this. Reactive power thing is huge. Okay, so Kale's gonna go now and hold this. The top lane have swapped already. They're finding the two v two very, very difficult. We can't just straight ults. The Vi at this moment. Yeah, you see, this is fine. Please finish your Grump here. I mean, there's no point stopping here because you wouldn't have seen him. But if it's, you know, you've just started the Grump, rotate immediately. Get this kill here. That's fine. Good. Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. Hold that as much as you can, but you're going to lose all the plates. Now you look at Twisted Fate. Here we go. You see that on the map? Yasuo is once more top lane trying to 2v2. Twisted Fate has Predator. El Predator Abuser. Q charge. Ult up in 11 seconds, flash Q to smack down. Boom, beautiful. Hold the charge, hold the charge, hold the charge. Don't make it too obvious. Now, when you hold the charge, you know straight up. And of course, I didn't, I can't believe I didn't even talk about this. They buffed her directly, uh, this patch as well. <laughs> maybe I should put that at the beginning. I'll do an addendum at the beginning, maybe. But essentially, they did not really buff her, but they did some bug fixes. Well, not bug fixes, but just like shifts in her numbers. It made it more... Fluid, consistent, and natural with the Q charge timer, the, the, the CC timer, the ultimate timer, the travel time, yada yada. Read the patch notes. No direct buff, but definitely some feel good stuff that really helps her. Um, that really helps her just I, I, quality of life fixes, if you will. You know, feels good, feels consistent. Your muscle memory can really kick in. So, charging that Q and then using the flash, just, you know, a little bit of mind games, fall back to the dragon. And the Herald activation here for maximum plates. Swings the gold back in favor of your team, even though your bottom lane is having a tragic time of it. After this, reset to base. Here we go. And so far, if you play Vi, if you play Vi, and we finish the Divine Sundra, we're going into the Faji for the Sterax, and then uh, probably Dust Dance and things like this. If you play Vi, this is basically at minimum, I think, what you want to have achieved in this game. We need to rotate immediately to this. Uh, ult is up again. That's going to start getting really feisty. Don't go too deep. Don't go too deep. Oh, the Jinx rocket. How cinematic. Marvel would be proud of that. Okay, we got hit by that. We got hit by that. Um, yeah. Unfortunate. Don't go too deep when it's very clear you're not going to win it. But I think at minimum, having four kills, two assists, two dragons, and a herald, we can all agree this is a good day. It's a good, good week at the office. Don't int there, obviously. I mean, look at the bottom. This is an absolute tragedy of the maximum scale. This poor Jin. This poor Jin. I mean, he's got no one else to blame but himself. The fact of the matter is that the Twitch is still 3-1-2. And you haven't really interacted with him. And with these cheese strategies, uh, uh, champions, you're probably not going to. I'd be worried about... Here we go. You see, my eyeballs are looking at it, thinking she's over pushing. They were just mid. He's going to collapse through. It's not difficult to track this and pay attention to it. Um... Yasabi is doing whatever he wants to do. All right. Lose your flash there then. We kind of want 11 really soon because look at this. You see that the uh, base damage goes up to 500 at 16, 325 at 11. But the cooldown, 82 to 55. So those those markers are very, very important for, uh, for Vi to hit. Even with Ultimate Hunter. Even with Ultimate Hunter. What do we add? Four out of five, yeah. So we still have one more stuck to go. We can then hit this control ward. And uh, we have a nice push here. The Twisted Fate is doing his job. I mean, he's 1-1-3. It's not been any sort of magic, but he's played well. And the Vi has really controlled the game. And that's what's most important here. We do want 11 and we don't agree. Um, reactive Power Thing strikes again. Reactive Power Thing strikes again. She's on the blue. We see the TF overstay. They try to engage. You Q through the wall. Or R through the wall. Usually Q for chain CC. It's so straightforward, ladies and gentlemen. It's so straightforward. But the champion has strong numbers. Careful again with that Q charge. We're holding it, we're holding it, we're holding it. Okay. It, the Rakan's kind of tricky. Well, I know we're really close to 11. Smite it and get out. Yeah, perfect. 
Great, 622. And now the damage starts to build up. And this is the thing. I know I often say the term fisting, you know, like fisting uh, in bottom lane, fisting in top lane, fisting the enemy jungler. She literally does it. And it can be very <laughs> misdirecting to think, oh, you know what? No, the great misdirect to use a, a between the bear to me reference. If you get that, please let me know in the comments. Basically, you'd think she needs to fight and gang the whole time, but it's not always true. She farms very, very well, very efficiently. And once you get going and you get a couple points in E here, I mean, the Q cooldown, Yasuo is going over the wall there. Uh, we do have ultimate up in eight, six, five, four, three, two, one, and you, sir, are getting knocked out. Wait a second. This isn't okay. <laughs> I hate shield bow. That was so cinematic in my mind. Like, here we go, here we go. And then he just... This item, can we... Can we height shame the graves uh, by basically range shaming, you know, in, in, in a sort of uh, analog kind of way? Basically, we um, make it only for ranged, and then we say you need to have at least this much range to use it. And then graves with this much range is uh, not able to use it. I think we solve a lot of problems that way, don't you? Because they've just replaced Gore Drinker, some of them, with Shield Bow. Actually, as many, some people have. But I know Viego enjoys the shield bow. I probably oversell that on the main channel a lot. I, I kept saying for weeks, guys, build shield bow. Please stop building Divine Sandra. And now you're doing it. But hey, I'm just here to help you win. Get ELO. If you need to build the uh, shield bow, build shield bow. Always scan here when you know people have been touching your stuff. Just like you should use disinfectants and wash your toys when you lend it. And if you borrow toys, uh, don't. Well, I mean, it's fine, but clean it, you know? Like, put the discs back in the right discs. You guys don't, you Zoomers don't even know what discs are. We, we used to share CDs back in the day. Now you just share playlists. So, I'm gonna stop that right there because you guys are gonna have no idea what I'm talking about. Here we go, straight up first team fight. Use that Q, I think a good little bit of Q poke is, is nice because basically, look at that. It's 262, 525 based on charge time. So, if you can get a max charge, so I'm reading things to you, my bad. If you can get a max charge Q, and you don't want to engage, but it's front to back team fighting, then you can afford to detach here. So this is nice. I like this. We've max charged, good damage. We can follow that through with uh, our nice auto cancel E. And basically now, let's have a look. This is, use this over the wall a lot, please. That was just a great Q. We can alt to finish off. He's not, uh, she's not going for the Rakan. <laughs> the, the E would have almost killed him anyway. Actually did kill him. So the alt selection is important, but that's just great. That's just Vi carrying. That's just by caring. And you're, you're getting it, right? This is why her win rate is so good because the numbers suit her. The meta suits her. The bug, the quality of life fixes suit her. All of this is good and well and healthy. And you can deal with her decently. Although I think at this point, the numbers might be a little obscene, but let's see how we go into the new season. Um, but if you have good target selection, let's do the Grum. If you have good target selection, then without a doubt, this champion can be for you. If you have poor target selection, then it won't matter. If you're ulting the wrong target, if you're not queuing properly, if you're not using uh, the, the wall hacks, so to speak, um, you're not going to get the most out of this champion. And a lot of people struggle with that. I mean, you'll play Warwick, you'll play Volibear, or you'll play other champions like this, even, even meta champions, and you'll get Giga Turbo fed, you get to the mid to the late game, and then you'll be telling me, Verkayu, I get to 30 minutes and I can't kill people and we lose. So, well, your target selection is probably bad. There's no reason, there's no way you ever get giga fed on a champion that's good and you just automatically automatically lose every game at 30 minutes. Unless your target selection and team fighting is just ass. So, Vi is straightforward and very easy to focus on that area of improvement. Are you curing the right targets? Are you alting the right targets? And obviously throwing in those E's because they're AOE, right? The cone. The cone of the E. Very juicy. Remember that. Rakan, baiting, baiting, and waiting. Nice Q, peel Q there, right? Peel Q. Staying on the target, we get ulted. We're holding, we're holding, we're holding. There we go, wait for the Q again. Just keep auto attacking as much as we can, but it's doomed. And now this is where Vi is a little different. You might be saying, okay, that's terrible. And I'm saying no. That's why that fight in my voice, you would have heard my voice. I'm not worried about that fight at all. She is literally sitting here, just pumping out the orders, pumping out the cues, pumping out the peel ultimate there on the Yasuo, and being a disruptor between her, the, the enemy team and her team, while her Kale can just 
angelically swash from the back and uh, Jin can just run away and just do reckless things. You know, long range bombs. Well, not this world. Sad. Anyway, good, good, two good team fights in a row. Poke Q, use poke from the Jin there, over the wall surprise, dive the backline to get kills. Next fight immediately after that, Yasuo is really trying to get this thing going with a shield bow and an infinity edge. So if he's going really too deep and you need to protect the limited carry potential that your, your team has, disrupt it, alt it, and then sit there and absorb with your shield. Keep auto attacking, keep going. You've got Divine Sundra. Whenever your stun is up, use it. Whenever your alt is up, use it. Two great examples of why Vi is so good and has the best winner. Because you can team fight in both capacities and you can be an assassin in the third, re the third thing. As soon as someone steps out of position, Yeet them to Brazil. Well, not really. I think Mordecai has domain over that, but I'm okay with it. That happens too in your games, no? They step out, Twitch steps on them. I hate Twitch for that reason. But at this point, he hasn't really done anything. And sometimes the cheese, I mean, he was 3 1 2. Sometimes the cheese is going to be more intense. But just keep your head about you. The Vi had a great game plan, reacted accordingly once or twice, took the objectives. We're on almost Drake's, we're on Drake's soul point here. This is all perfect. Take the camps, push up with your team. Yasu is now rage splitting. And in this, in this situation, Twisted Fate will rise. The Twisted Fate rises. And he will be able to uh, deal with the top lane and maybe even stop the back there. I'm watching it, I'm watching it, I'm watching it. You watch this. He stops it. That's good. Don't over-engage here because if Yasuo can get back to base, you're in a 5v4. Your Twisted Fate uses ult to disrupt. He doesn't have TP. He has Predator. He has Ignite. Now that Yasuo is detaching here, the Twisted Fate's trying to stop him. Okay? Yasuo doesn't get cancelled there, unfortunately, but he cannot afford to, uh, to over-push uh, to cancel that back. So in this case, use your Baron, take the Inhib, bounce out. Great job by everyone. If you're the leader of your team and whatever elo you're in, do the same thing. Now... Coalesce, take camps on your way to the dragon because we have time before it spawns. Make sure you're in position. If someone's out of position, hit that Q. Very, very nice. We're ulting that. The Rakan's dancing on the back line here, so it's on us to try and take out the Yasuo. We have to be very cautious. Kale flashes forward to help us. We take out the priority target. Kale dives the back line now. Ult flashing. The Jin actually hits something. The Rakan's engaged. There's literally nothing. Vi uses the second charge of Q onto the Vi. Gets chain CC'd by the chain demon. Doesn't matter. Everyone else can clean up, and Vi actually survives. So it doesn't matter. Voila! I love Vi team fighting. It's just, you see, left eye, right eye, left eye, you, you've got to shift the whole time. You've got to shift the whole time. You have to always understand your target selection. Look at what's going on. You see the Rakan dancing in the back line. Is the Yasuo ulting in there? Do I need to turn focus? Can I finish him off? Is someone going to help me? It's, it's dynamic. Team fighting is dynamic. And the ability to swap targets like this. Vi is just so easy to do that. You know, it really is one of the best champions to learn how to teamfight. I think we could have just straight up ended. <laughs> Potentially. But I think um, because Jin did did the dragon and just was like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go here and take this stuff. I'm Jin. Cool. Uh, you, I've talked about this. You know, sometimes the Janna, the Twisted Fate, and the Vi will try end. And then you come in and then you'll say, well... You know, we've thrown now and they get a Baron. Whose fault is it? Well, it's the Jin's fault, but did you really have to push and die? No, if you recognize the Jin hasn't rotated and you recognize he's not coming with you, push him in, take a second inhib, reset, spend your gold, off we go. Stop watch for the GA. We do ideally want to finish that um, next, I, I would feel. No, no, feel, definitely. But the stopwatch is great because in games like this where you have a lead and you can end, the one thing that adds a wrinkle into the, your, your clever plans um, is that you die in a team fight from something random that happens, and the stopwatch just prevents a little bit of that randomness. Now, the one thing that has a key cannot stop is auto attacks, and the one thing that the Kale has in spades currently is auto attacks. Almost 16. Almost 16. Jinx is pushing this up as much as possible. We have the wave there. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Very good. 
Very good. I hope you, hopefully you were watching that with me with my eyes. Uh, my eyes got kind of big. I was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We can do this. That's great. That's great. I love those rotations. I love it when it works. If it doesn't work, it's kind of sad, but I think in this situation, it's absolutely perfect. The Twitch ended up doing nothing. So those cheese ball strategies in the jungle really do end up doing nothing a lot of the time. And now you've enabled your team to scale, you know? And even that little flash at level four on the Silas, that, that's a lane breather for the KO. That just allows it to breathe a little bit in the lane. You know, it just allows them that, that safety, that mental concept that, you know what, the Silas doesn't have flash to all of me. So even if my jungler's down bot side doing dragons and diving in the tower, uh, at the very least, I have something to play around. The fact that he has no flash and I can play accordingly. So hopefully you enjoyed and learned something. Vi is a great all-round champion to learn the jungle. This is why she has the best win rate in the jungle. I do recommend the Hail of Blades page by default. You can still go conquer. You can do Predator if you wish, but Hail of Blades is the go-to. Divine Sundra is excellent. There are a couple other mythics you can try. Always look at the, the statistics and the match history to this will be linked below. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy Arcane. Enjoy the World Finals. And I'll see you all in the next tutorial.